Hey folks, it's me again, uh, the Scott Man. I uh, don't know about the audio. Uh, there's a piezo microphone somewhere on this uh, gaming laptop that I got. Uh, it's called an Omen. But we'll see. Yeah, it may turn out all right, and we'll see what see what the things are going. Um, I'm going to take a departure from my usual uh, examination of uh, kind of like a little bit of electronics or some sort of this or that that I that just examine or talk about um, uh, to use, you know, my channel for. Um, you know, a couple of my um, inspirations to create a channel. There's an Australian guy named Greg. Uh, Greg's Kitchen. You gotta look it up. The guy's crazy. It's not crazy. He's just. It's it's a great kind of examination of how you could demonstrate different cooking uh, approaches in your own little kitchen to making stuff um, on the fly. And also on kind of on the cheap. It's not really that exaggerated, you know. but um, in my kind of line of work, I don't make a great deal of money. A lot of what I make for myself to eat <clears throat> is, uh, uh, you know, I astound myself and my capabilities with, I can make three or four uh, meals that are all maybe two or three dollars a piece, which may or may not be. You could probably spend eight, nine, ten dollars on them someplace, uh, and maybe not be as good because you're doing the you're doing the work. You you put it together yourself. What I'm doing here right now is something that may be on the line of. You know, it may cost, you know, seven or eight, seven or eight, nine dollars each plate and get a couple plates out of it. But you could spend easily, I mean, in the upper west side of Manhattan, you probably spend 22, 20, 24, something like that on, on that, that dish. You know, might as well, you know. So I'm calling it a uh, Sharapova uh, shrimp. Uh, I, <laughs> it's an alliteration thing. Uh, both things start with SH. Yesterday I heard on the news that Maria Sharapova is no longer going to be competing in women's tennis. Don't get me wrong, I'm a Monica Sellis and then later a uh, Anna Karnikova kind of fan. So Sharapova, not really, but hey, Sharapova shrimp. So first we'll do is uh, got some uh, olive oil. You can never do enough things with olive oil. Go over here and get myself some, uh, just some onion, some silks, you know, basic, basic. Get a little onion. Uh, I got myself here a, uh, they call it a mandolin. Uh, this is an OXO Good Grips. Um, I've uh, had it for a couple of years. I really like it when I want the uh, the ingredient that I'm cutting up to be uniform and also to meld and disappear in that which I'm trying to make. Like this time I'm making a pretty nice sauce. So uh, I think you turn it to the unlock position. Uh, then it'll open. Now this is just a regular setting where you can, I don't know, run some fennel or a, you know, an onion through here, but make thin slices. 
But underneath here, there's some uh, various cut, cutting implements that give you options. This one kind of cuts things in various strips. And then you got your depth setting. And uh, I think it's a stand too. You, you, you fold it out so that it kind of sits up. And somewhere there's a, uh, a guardy deal so you don't really uh, inadvertently cut one of your fingers off while uh, trying to, you know, do what you're busy uh, doing. So I see that I've already cut this in the uh, French Provençal, uh, which is what you do is you just cut three or four slaps. You don't cut the end off. You just do three or four angles on there. And then you just go the other direction, and you, you've already got a pretty good minced onion anyhow. But these mandolins, they give you really itty-bitty... Very small portion, and I want what I want to do is not have so much big chunks of onion in my sauce, but uh, the flavor of the onion and the resulting uh, body of it. So you just I'm just going to push that through. Uh, try to eliminate um, portions of my own fingers. Uh, okay, that's as far as I go. I'm going to use this portion right here. That's it for you guys. I'll take this sucker and put it away. So... <clears throat> It makes quick work of a uh, half an onion there. You got, uh, it makes little strands. Uh, that, a, that a knife can also do. But it's, it's, it's scary accurate. Each piece is however many millimeters you want goes in there so get that done this is half an onion all itty bitty tiny little pieces so what we're going to do here let's take my emerald skillet this is just a stainless steel skillet uh it's not non-stick but it's a clad it's an all clad uh it's an emerald, emerald edition. Um, and uh, when it came out, it was $209. I did not pay $209 for this. But uh, stainless steel, stainless steel, uh, bottom's aluminum, and then you got a wedge of uh, copper. In here and then uh, back to steel so it's like aluminum copper steel bonded or uh, clad all clad is the company that makes it it's like clad together so what it does is it eliminates the possibility of hot spots uh, which comes in handy when you're making omelets or you're dealing with something you don't want to scald in one spot and not have it be evenly warming on the other. Okay, so we got a little bit of onion here. We're going to um, maybe give it a little shot, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit, little, bit little bit of olive oil in there. Never can go wrong with that. All right. So just hit that on the heat, not too high, just a little bit. All right, let's get that going just a little bit. 
a little bit of butter. So, a couple of hunks of butter, that's probably a tablespoon and a half. A couple of bit of little tiny slices. Put those over there. <coughs> Put this back. Now, what do we got here? Oh, yes. So what I'm making is a vegetable uh, basis, a uh, little bit of a melange, a little veggie uh, substance inside of my pasta sauce. What we have here is a shrimp sauce, but what we'd like to do is give it a little bit of color, a little bit of body, and, and, and also some nice flavor. So what I've got here is a little bit of, it's red bell pepper, and it's cut into matchstick size pieces. Um, I don't know, I'm a child of the 60s and 70s. Uh, matchsticks, uh, many restaurants would have, you know, box, box matches that you could, the, the nicer restaurants where the you would get maybe you know 18 or 26 matches in a little box and you pull it out and it's like a wooden stick most people don't smoke anymore anyway these are matchstick size red pepper bell pepper pieces and what we're going to do is try to enhance our shrimps now these are this is a, I think they're farm-raised shrimp, um, but the, you know they're they're not been frozen. They're like little guys. They got like little uh, kind of antenna deals on them, and kind of some kind of proboscis. You, if you can see these like little guys, they, you know, got little little got little eyeballs, and you know they're little guys. But a lot, they got a lot of legs. I don't even know how many legs, you, how many legs is this? It's like, when you look at it, it's like, I don't know, it's like 16, 18, 16, 22 legs. I don't even, I can't even count all these legs. I don't even have, look at this. It's like one, two, three, four. I think I know, that's why they clean these guys. Because people like, they want to take this home. Like, oh man, oh, the poor little guys. Look. Little shrimp guys, like oh, ah, screw it. This is like one more shrimp. So it's just uh, you kind of you kind of get them right in the middle, like that. These are the best from South Street Seaport. They're from downtown. I know there's a there's a Chinese guy near where I work in Rye, and. He's got all the best stuff. He comes in at like 5.45, 6.15 in the morning and gets all this stuff fresh. And this, this, these guys haven't been busy, been frozen. So it's funny. The first time I actually had one, I, I was just amazed at the, the texture and the flavor of one of these meals where it hasn't been really preserved by the freezing process. I mean, who knew? It's, it's like really different. So that's a little bit of extra shrimp. Get that going. We got a little bit of shrimp here for the shrimp. Right, so we got, this is what a pound of shrimp uh, head on looks like so I guess after you have to get rid of the head and the legs and the antennas and the eyeballs and all the little extra stuff I guess it's less than a pound it's probably three quarters of a pound something like that a lot of red pepper here so we're gonna put that in with the onion all right 
Um, have a little sip of beer there. That's for me, actually. Sometimes I actually take a little bit of this and hope it just give, you know, give a little bit of steam, get the steam going. What we have here, I'm making it with farfalle. Farfalle, 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 farfalle. I forget what it is. It's like bow ties. I think it's some kind of some kind of Italian word for bow tie. Like anyway, this is a three dollar kind. I figured I'm gonna make a video for my channel. Hey, you know, go for the three dollar pasta. You can't beat it, right? All right. Pop that in the water. Always liberally salt your water. I've been watching TVFN for years, and they always say that you should make the water you boil your pasta in as salty as sea water. I go with like a two tablespoons. I don't. I don't know about sea water. I know I swallowed a couple of gulps of sea water. It's pretty salty. I don't think I'm gonna boil my shit in so that much because I put cheese on it after, and there's, pardon me, the sauce and things that I'm putting on it are high in sodium and fat. Sodium and fat, and uh, I don't want to infuse my pasta with like way extra salt, but a little bit of salt is is good in there. Especially with strands of pasta like fettuccine, linguine, spaghetti, what have you, capellini, because it, uh, I think it helps with keeping it from becoming stuck to one another. I think that's part of the salty business that they do. All right, so we got a little bit of shrimp here. Probably a pound. It's a pound of uh, shrimp. So, um, got a pop up of a uh, some kind of software or something. All right, we're up to around twenty minutes now. I may have to edit this if it gets to be forty-five minutes. I did post a thirty-minute video, but. Uh, all right, so we got our shrimp here. Get the pasta going. Um, let's see what we can do with this pasta. Move that around. We got the bow ties. We got the vegetable thing. Red pepper and onion. So this, these suckers are going out like gangbusters. Um, the salt that's in the butter is already attacking the onion bits and getting the red pepper to relax. And a lot of moisture is coming out of here. So what you have here is uh, <clears throat> it's still pretty stiff, but it's going to relax. And that's what we want. We're going to have that. It's going to be an aspect of not an Alfredo, but it's it's a it's a it's a, it's a white sauce to go with the shrimp and the pasta. And what I'm going to do is take my shrimp and just steam them right on that on the vegetables there. Once the red pepper gets a little more tender, I'm just gonna pop the shrimp right on top of the whole situation. And we use that. This is a, an anodized uh, 
aluminum kettle, which is going to make a little bit of sauce, and that'll be my pasta sauce. A little bit of shrimp, a little bit of onion, red pepper, and a little bit of cheese. Uh, most of these recipes will recommend using Parmesan Reggiano. Um, I don't have that kind of budget for this video. These shrimps were, uh, I don't know, eight or nine bucks, something like that. It's like 11, but I got a pound and a half with the heads on it and everything. It's only like eight bucks a pound, fresh. But uh, I used a quarter pound last night. So this is all I got left. This is probably ten dollars. So well, I don't know all this other stuff. All right, so what do we got here? Forget about what you think about it. Like, you, if you take a few ingredients, a little bit of butter, a little bit of uh, olive oil, let's say, um, some pasta some hot water you can you can eat better than out at home i mean yeah it's it, i know it's fun it's fun to go out and have somebody serve you and all that it's nice right but i mean it's so cool actually you know a lot of times i'd like to see what i'm watching on the on the video i mean one of my videos recently was concerning like discs and things like video, you know my own entertainment that i like to see it'd be fun to be like you could be at home you could do, watch the shit that you you're interested in and you don't have to go any place and uh many times you know whatever a lot of times it's it's more comforting to be in your own house so i'm gonna take uh some time out here I think I'll take these shrimps. No, I'm not going to take these shrimps and do shit yet. Put a lid on this pasta. And what I've been showing is, uh, I've been looking at these things. When you make a cream sauce, sometimes it's nice to have a half ladle of hot pasta water from your pasta that you're boiling. Somehow the the, the uh, starch in the water from what you're cooking, pasta wise, gives an extra uh, value of body to the the sauce that goes into it. It's kind of you know you drain the rest. But you save, you save a good like ladle full. Maybe, maybe something like this. You know, save save a save a little bit of the the hot water from the pasta you're making, and you put that right in to what you're making. Now I don't have uh, Parmesan Reggiano on here. What I did was I used a microplane and I just microplaned off some Emmentaler and a little bit of actually a Monterey pepper jack. So it's half, it's half Emmentaler, uh, kind of a, it's kind of a Swiss cheese. It's softer than Gruyere. Um, and some Monterey pepper jack, kind of a California style um, taco kind of cheese. I, I, I got I got hooked on it when I was in high school in San Francisco. I, lo I love pepper jack. So I kind of put it in things that there's no rules in food. I put it in things that it don't really kind of doesn't really belong, but it winds up in there. So we got a little bit of that. Let me get that cheese going here. Yeah. I, 
guess this would, this would be like um, a cup and a half. Cup and a half of finely grated, uh, you know, Gruyere. If you were going full Parmesan Reggiano, I would say three quarters of a cup. Be fine. Uh, that stuff's rich. It's heavy duty. It's very dense and dry, but it's got a lot of it bang for the buck. A lot of salt. And they they salt the, the Reggiano. They they wipe it the, the the rounds with like a salt wipe while it's aging. A lot of sodium in there. Dude, this is just a little bit of Monterey and Emmental. So there's a lot of kick in terms of saltiness, but it's it's a lot of dairy. So this will rich. It'll make it a little bit thicker than it'll thicken it up quite a bit. So we got the the cheese, a little shrimp. What else have we got in there? Well, I don't know how this moves around, but I was. In case, keep a little light cream and maybe a, a, a dollop of some creme fraiche. You know, boom. Uh, British would call it clade cream or something, but uh, you know, uh, sour cream. You know, a big, big, uh, big blast of some sour cream and maybe a, a little bit of uh, half and half. You know, keep things moving, get things like moving around in there and get get kind of a sauce going. Of course, when you're talking about a cream sauce and shrimp and, and fettuccine or um, farfalle, you want to have some garlic. This is some... Um, I think like three three cloves, three big cloves, not not finely minced, just sliced in big hunks. It's like four four cloves of garlic, like cut into big ass hunks. This goes in on top of the shrimp when those green those red peppers are starting to tender a little bit, get a little movement movement. A little happy. Okay, we have achieved happiness in the onion and red peppers. So we're gonna take the shrimp, just give them, give them, in, give them all, hang, have them little, get them all happy. They can all be in there and be all happy together with the vegetables. Kind of spread them out, get them all evenly, evenly arranged in a light, like layer of shrimpness on top. Then you take your four cloves of garlic, and just like. Just sprinkle the garlic goodness over the shrimps and, and get them all completely garlicified. Just let them let them all like enjoy the happiness of garlic. Now I'm gonna put a lid on it and lower the heat down to like minimal. It's mostly going to be just like letting it relax. No more busyness. Just, you know, it's done any, anyhow. The, the hurdle was getting the onions and the red pepper kind of to where they're like a nice tender, toothsome kind of, you know, yumminess in, in another medium, which is going to be the, the sauce that goes on the pasta. But the, the shrimp... Shrimp cooks themselves. They're such a small organism and very fatty. They just sort of 
you put a little heat near them and they just kind of crinkle up and get all tight. You don't want them tough and um, woody. Like, a, you know, bad Chinese restaurant. You want them like just right where they were, you know, cooked to the, you know, the, the, where you can eat it safely but not ruin. If you, if you spend the money on a pound of shrimp, you know, why not just have it be right on? So we got our little cheese here. Oh yeah. Nice. Put the microplane away. Yeah. A little pasta going. So how do I do this? Well, let's get the ingredients out. Get a little bit of sour cream, a little bit of uh, half and half, a couple of little dairy elements here. We got the cheese, so. I'll start this off. I think I'll steal. A little bit of pasta water. Just a little bit of that. A little bit of red pepper, onion, and uh, shrimp and garlic water. A little bit of some moisture to go in there. Take, let's say, I don't know, quarter cup, third of a cup. I'm going a third of half and half. And a generous, generous little quantity of sour cream. Just a nice, this is like, I think, uh, four tablespoons. You gotta bring that up to a good head of steam. I call it a dash of beer. You could always uh, substitute water. I think that's like a half cup. Alcohol always burns out on these things. You get anything up to 150, 160 degrees, there's no, especially something like beer, that's like 5%. There's, there's nothing, you might have a little bit of the, uh, the starch or the carbs and the water, but there won't be any, any alcohol in your food.
No, I'm good that. I think at this point I can turn the flame off on the onion, red pepper, and shrimp. Let it rest. That old clad uh, emerald pan, the copper wafer in the middle and all that, 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 that thing stay off for like 45 minutes. You, you turn the flame off. It's still going. You got a lid on it. Those shrimp, you don't want to overdo them. Oh, it's test your pasta. That's it. What? Never run hot water into an island uh, plumbing situation without running a little bit of tepid water first because you can screw up your plumbing and it ain't my plumbing, trust me. That's a whole pun, that's a whole pun. Never rinse pasta. I'm not running water on it. Burning water through the pipes. You don't run water over pasta, do you? Do you rinse pasta? Ever watch the the Food Network? Does anybody run water over prepared pasta? Have you ever seen it? No, you'll see it in people's homes. People think that you rinse pasta. <laughs> There's something sticky on there that you got to wash away. It's not the way it's done. All right. So we got the, the components. We got the this, that, and the other thing. What we do here is we take some of this cheese business. I said it's almond taller and pepper jack, half and half microplane into a, about a cup and a half. Just to let her know who's boss. Another little dash. I don't know how many in a cup that is. But it's, uh, we got a cup and a half of cheese here, so. I let that fly. I don't know how this heat is. Let it relax a little bit. You know, a little bit of black pepper.
That's the base of the cheese sauce. It's got a little bit of half and half, a little bit of a uh, little bit of beer. What I'm going to do here is going to take the pasta, remove some for later. This is a whole pound. Don't need a pound. I probably use three quarters of a pound here. Save some of these nice bow ties for a nice uh, something, something that would be good with it. That's good. This is more like three quarters of a pound. Shake that. So I'm going to pass it down. Get this sucker going a little more. A little more of the cheese. Good at rush things. All right. Now, if you see, our little shrimps have reduced in size by one third. Two thirds. What I was saying was that they are one third the size that they were when I tossed them in there. So what you do, punch a bunch of them in there with the pasta. There you go. And add some of the onion and red pepper. Rest of the cheese. At this point, I'd give it a little knock of some black pepper again. <coughs> Let's see. A little. And maybe. Now there's uh, fresh garlic in the shrimp and veg. Just a pinch of dried garlic. And keep that moving. Get that cheese moving in there. All right. A little bit of here. A little bit of pasta. A little bow ties. A little more of the, the cheese emulsion. Turn the power off there. What we've got here is a little, little more of the uh, onion, shrimp, and red pepper. Just like toss them in liberally. And then just go for broke. Just hit the rest of it. Hit the rest of that sucker with all that nice. There we go. Sharapova shrimp.
That's it, baby. You got your major food groups in here. You got your shrimp. You got your pasta. You got your red peppers. You got your cheese. A little, uh, couple of knocks of beer in there. And uh, one thing I haven't gone for is the sour cream. You would probably want to put. Actually, I think I did put a little sour cream in earlier, but a couple of knocks of sour cream to give it body and um, it'll make it hold up against gravity. Uh, all the different, you know, components that we have here, they they have their own mind. They want to do this or do that, or they want to settle down. You put a little bit of sour cream in there, and it'll kind of hold it all together and make it one. Like something that, you know, little like fragments of garlic or onion or whatever's in there. It'll stick around and it'll kind of cling on to the rest of it. So anyway... That's my invention. For leap year. Sheriff over shrimp, leap year edition. Let's see, I've played it up. Um, let's go ahead and play some of Like a nice cream sauce. I love pimento. I love red pepper. I love like a creamy sauce when, when I get when I have something that has shrimp in it. And also, it's fun to have shrimp, like I don't know, kind of a cheesy effect to things. Mm -hmm. so, sort of like that's what it came out to be. It's sort of like bow ties. Red pepper, onion, shrimps, and I think I would probably hit it with a little bit more black pepper, just a little bit. Boom, 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 boom. And that's it. And then I got some parsley here. It's dried parsley, but little bit of green like dried parsley on top and give it kind of like a some kind of an effect there but anyway um something like that i got four of these like four of these now with the shrimp and the aspects of things that went into it I guess it'd probably be um, a bowl like this would probably cost I don't know five dollars five yeah probably five dollars with the cheese and the the cream or whatever you know an onion is like what is it, what how much is an onion but I mean you know all together and the, the effort it takes to make you're talking five dollars. But like, say you had something like this at a sit-down restaurant. What are they gonna want, really? Like, wh what could you pay? Anyway, let's here we go. That's a fifty-minute uh, video. If I don't, if I don't edit it, so let's go. Hit stop now. Good night.